So that's my relationship with the Steiners. And the ring was great. But what they did outside the ring, they could have cost me my life. They could have cost me my job. They could. They were so jealous because we beat them for the titles on the first night when we came to Raw. That was our business, ladies and gentlemen. Don't tell me you work with the Steiners. Oh, yes. Year, Holy years macro. later, I ended up doing three matches with Scott Steiner. He was good worker, Scott. Yeah, he was outstanding. Uh, one of my best opponents. Got really? along, got yeah. along great with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, we talked a bit about uh, when we had Carl Willett on. We talked about your matches that you did with them. Uh, won the tag titles, obviously, yeah, yeah, with the, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the hockey stick. Yeah, great, <laughs> gr great, great stuff. Great exposure uh, for the Montreal Canadiens, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I'd love to know your, your memories of working with the Steiner brothers at that time, 93, 94. Well, let's just put it this way. My memories in the ring are a lot better than the ones out of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> because, anyway, long story short is I really enjoyed work with the Steiners. They had a lot of respect for us. Well, I guess so. The first night we came in, we took the titles. Sure. The first, first night. So that kind of pissed them off. But at the same time, gave me gave them respect for us. But gave us heat, too. A lot of heat. So. So, uh, I gotta tell you a story real fast. You know, where uh, Carl will tell you this if you talk to him. Uh, we're in Winnipeg and uh, Ludwig Borga, I don't know if you know him, Ludwig yep. Borga. He was from uh, Finland. Finland, yeah. exactly. And he's a tough guy. He's a real, really tough guy in life. And uh, so he's at the gym. So the Steiners go and they cut his tires on the car. Mm -hmm. And then, so when he comes out of the gym, and then the Steiner's standing not too far, and he says to, to Ludwig, he says, hey, he says, I don't want to be a stooge, but he says, I know who did it. You know, the Black Lincoln and this and that, and me and Carl had the Black Lincoln, and they, so they, so by that time, I, when I left the gym, like at three o'clock, I knew that Ludwig Borga that night in Winnipeg was going to kick my ass in the dressing room. Mm. The word was out. And that was after the Dynamite Kids incident, like a couple of years later. So I don't want no trouble in wrestling. I didn't. I, I don't like, I'm not a fighter. I don't want that. So when I'm starting to feel really bad in the gym, starting to get sweats again, like reviving and remembering all the bad things, all the way to the, uh, the arena that night, I told Carl, I said, Carl, I said, listen, I'm not going to ask you to, to help me in this fight but i'm just gonna ask you if ever you see that i'm a, a vegetable you know and i can't walk anymore i'm gonna go in a wheelchair just pull them off me you know before i get to the wheelchair but he says i gotta do what i gotta do so imagine that and i called the office in new york and and and, and i called the uh, one of the i think it was black jack lanza and i called him and i told him i said uh, listen i said i just want to let you guys know there's probably going to be a fight tonight in the dressing room but I said, I want you to guys to know I didn't instigate this. And then I told them what happened. But I said, I'm asking you right now. I'm talking to New York now. I'm in Winnipeg. I said, I'm asking you right now. Don't butt in. I'll work it out. But I just want you to know this is what happened. So when I got to the arena that night, it was amazing because I, I got in front of the door there and i was all sweaty i was scared i was worried anyway all that good stuff <laughs> that wasn't telegraphed or choreographed anyway so i got into the dressing room i opened the door and right there to my left the first guy sitting there's ludwig borgo he's playing cards with uh, billy gunn and there's three four playing cards so i stop right there and i don't know how i did it i just looked at him i looked at borgo and i said uh, hey ludwig and I took a big voice to him. I said, hey, Ludwig. And he was saying, he looked up at me like this. I said, uh, can we talk outside? And he looked at me like, and I swear to God, you could ask Billy Gunn, ask Carl what? He went like, what do you want? I said, I need to talk to you outside. It's important. I said, don't worry. I said, we're not going to fight. I said, I need to talk to you out there. So uh, he put his cards down and you could hear a pin drop fall in the dressing room. Everybody was waiting any second he's going to jump and kick my butt you know and, <laughs> and he got up and he went outside we got into the corridor and there was not a sound in the dressing room the door was closed but i'm sure they were all listening and i told borgo i said listen ludwig you want to kick my ass i said you go ahead and try and do it but you're going to do it for nothing i didn't cut your tires it's a setup but i said if you want to kick my ass go ahead it's your choice it's your move and he looked at me in my eyes and he saw how sincere i was and he saw how i was he says, no. He says, if you didn't do it, he shook his hand to me like this, shook <laughs> his hand, and we came back in the dressing room to all the disappointment of the boys who didn't get a party that night, especially the Steiners who set it all up. 
So that's my relationship with the Steiners. And the ring was great. But what they did outside the ring, they could have cost me my life. They could have cost me my job. They could. They were so jealous because we beat them for the titles on the first mm -hmm. night when we came to Raw. That was our business, ladies and gentlemen. It was all choreographed. It was all pre-planned. But there was so much vicious shots from left and right underneath to try to create animosity and jealousy. And so it's not always like it seems. And I will finish this statement by saying, please, please, everybody. Give me a chance to explain myself. Don't listen to what you hear about other people saying about me. Come and find out by yourself.